Ring of Honor is the company that held on to the essence and the foundation of what this industry was built upon. A man very important to this company once said that this championship represented professional wrestling freedom. And I still believe that. For over 20 years, if you were the Ring of Honor World Champion, that meant and still means you're the best wrestler on the planet. The current champion, Jonathan Gresham, is cut from the same cloth of men like Brian Danielson, CM Punk, and Samoa Joe as a man that can win at any time, at any position in the match. Jonathan Gresham has traveled more than 12 countries to come back and become who somebody said he couldn't be, who many people thought he was too small, many people thought he wasn't good enough, and he proved them all wrong. You never know how Jonathan Gresham is going to attack you until it's too late. Whether it's as something as simple as a hammerlock, a figure four, or something a little bit more deliberate and dangerous like his octopus stretch, Jonathan Gresham is almost unplannable as an opponent. I am the best hole for hole grappler in the world. I can pick apart my opponents limb by limb. I can exploit their weaknesses, find them, and use them against them. That is what makes me the absolute best in the world. I always moved on on my own merit, you know? I always, when I thought the time is right to leave, I left. And the only reason I left uh, any company that I wrestled for was because I felt there's no way to improve anymore. There's no way to get to where I want to be to wrestle at that level that I want to wrestle. The funny part is it brought me right back to Ring of Honor. Claudio, he represents a lot of people that started in Ring of Honor and went on to make a name for himself and became a household name. For Claudio, holding singles championship was never the priority in Ring of Honor. When Claudio had his opportunities at the world title, it was against Nigel McGuinness, who was a matchup nightmare for a man like Claudio Castagnoli. I really thought I had my best chance in that match against Morishima, and I came really, really, really close to beating him that day, and after that, I don't think I ever came that close again to winning the championship. I believe he's coming back to win singles gold to show that when he left, he never forgot where he came from. Yes, I'm sad that I've never won the Ring of Honor World Championship, but on the other hand, a lot of people, they focus so much on that World Championship that they lose sight of everything else, they lose themselves, they compromise who they are. They get destroyed by their own demon, and to me, um, I will not let that happen. I would definitely want to win the ROH World Championship. This will be the first time we get a chance to see the champion. And my God, Lee Moriarty has taken so much punishment. What? Are you kidding me? What the hell did he just do? I don't know what's going on. Jonathan Gresham pulled the hand back and now is walking out. Why is he hugging Tully? For a very long time, I've done things my way. To recreate this company, the way I see fit. It's been somewhat difficult in doing that. So only a fool continues to do the same thing and getting the same results. So I had to try it a different way. Kelly Blanchard's way. Moriarty's in yeah, trouble, he's forced to, to tap yeah. out. What you saw tonight was a textbook class of scientific wrestling. And Jonathan Gresham is the best today and maybe forever. Oh, wait a second. You can't have a conversation about the best technical wrestler in the world without including this man, Claudio Castagnoli. Fans want Claudio to win a world championship. Claudio wants to win a world championship. Can he win a world championship? I really do think so. I believe it, but not mine. I believe that Jonathan has that chip on his shoulder and uses that as fuel. And I believe Jonathan Gresham is gonna find a way to win like he always does. The champion is going in as the underdog. Now the champion is show why he's no longer the underdog. He is literally the best wrestler in the world. Claudio is dangerous on the mat, perhaps more dangerous on the mat than anybody that Jonathan Gresham has faced to date as Ring of Honor World Champion. So Gresham not only has to worry about the raw and brute strength of Claudio, but also his submission expertise. Claudio, on July 23rd, exactly 30.4 miles away from where you dropped the ball against Takeshi Morishima in the main event of Death Before Dishonor 2007 for this very championship. History will repeat itself. I believe that because on that night, you will step in the ring with the foundation. The undisputed Ring of Honor World Champion. And that means you're gonna have to outclass, outsmart, and outwrestle me, the best technical wrestler in the world. But you won't.
There would be no Ring of Honor Women's Division World Championship without Serena Deeb and the current champion Mercedes Martinez. These are people that came to Ring of Honor uh, before the women's division really took off. I made my Ring of Honor debut in 2007 in Dayton, Ohio. There was no women's division. We were working hard to put women's wrestling on the map, but we were working against the grain. We were working uphill. When Ring of Honor was in its infancy, Serena and Mercedes were really two of the trailblazers, the four founders of what has become an exceptional women's division over the years. This title reign means a lot. Early in my career, there was no women's division. Here I am holding a title that was never around. So for me to put it on the pedestal and bring the Ring of Honor women's division to the level that it should be, it's definitely a humbling experience. It's definitely something that I take to heart. The champ put herself in a very interesting position. Serena Deeb and Mercedes Martinez have been tagging together, they've been riding together. There has to be something inside of her when you're riding beside a champion, when you're tagging beside a champion, you're wanting to learn how this champion ticks. Are there any weaknesses? Are there any kinks in this armor? Teaming with Mercedes taught me that there's somebody just as aggressive as me. I consider myself the most aggressive woman on this roster, the most ruthless, the most cutthroat. I'll do whatever it takes, but guess what? Mercedes is in the exact same mindset. The challenger, I believe, has benefited the most from these two women teaming recently on AEW, and I think this is an unforced error for the champion. Serena has been scouting the champion ever since she's been around her. Nobody hangs around a champion and doesn't pick anything up from them. Sometimes they say when you scout someone, how do you really scout what their intentions are? Serena Deeb now has seen up close and personal what the champion has to offer, and the challenger has gained that advantage heading into Death Before Dishonor. Serena may think she can scout me. Serena may think that she knows me. But there's one thing that people need to realize about this OG badass is expect the unpredictability of what I can bring to the ring. I believe in my abilities above anything else. I have studied this game for 17 years. I'm not taking this match lightly. I know what Serena is capable of. I know what she can bring to the table. I know that at any moment that I can lose this title, all she needs is a three count. I think Mercedes Martinez, the champion, is going to do anything she can to hold on to the Ring of Honor World Women's Championship now that she's won it. The challenger has a hands-on, one-on-one, -on -one front seat experience against the champion. You know, she wanted a title shot. All she had to do was ask. That respect was on the table. But you want to make a statement? You want to attack me? Oh! That's Serena Deep! Wow! Serena Deep now with the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion in the Serenity Lock! You don't want to be partners? That's fine. I got you. I understand. But understand this, Serena. I walk in to that ring, respect, goes out the window. The reason they call me the professor is because I take people to school. I stretch people. I teach people lessons every single time I get in the ring. They've been trailblazers. They've been change makers. And now these women who blaze the trail are at the top of the division. This is not a beauty pageant. It's not a popularity contest. It's who hits the hardest, who wrestles the best, and who can finish their opponent. It's gonna be an incredible full circle moment because I know this championship means the world to both athletes. I'm at the highest level of my game right now. Death before dishonor, I'm walking in as champion. There is no woman that can touch me. And I'm walking out as champion. Remember that and I'm not gonna stop until I'm crowned women's champion. Jay Lethal here. I'm here to talk to all you Ring of Honor fans about something that's very important to me, and that's the start of a wrestler's career. It took the world champion, Samoa Joe, to show me the light, you know? Things that I never would've known if it wasn't for him, and also, how to carry myself outside of the ring.
he became my family. Everywhere I go, I still hear that word protege. There comes a time when a man has to stand alone. And I'm asking you, when do I step out of your shadow? You know, there were so many burgeoning prospects in Ring of Honor's infancy. And in this kind of misfit, ragtag band of idiots, you know, I saw Jay. This kid's put together, too. I don't even know why he's hanging out with Special K. Jay Lethal was a guy that was having fun in professional wrestling. Samoa Joe said, hey, take this sport serious, and you can really be a champion. He found a big brother, a man that could help him satisfy the ambition that he had to one day become the Ring of Honor world champion himself. I would say it was stronger than just a friendship, you know? Some aspects, you know, I consider it a brotherhood. I was used. I did his dirty work is what I did. The crowning achievement of my wrestling career at that time was having my parents sit in the crowd and watch as their young 19-year-old son won the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. It was that raise. So now you can buy that big house. That's what I had. And Samoa Joe, the person who helped me get there, took it all away. You know, to win the Pure Championship, you know, it's a bit bittersweet. In a lot of ways, it's marring your own creation. You know, it'd be like finishing the Mona Lisa and then slashing it with a knife. I think it was a wake-up call to Samoa Joe and a lesson well learned from Jay Lethal. He needed to see the holes in his game. He needed to understand that he wasn't there yet. And unfortunately, Jay needed to be taught that lesson. In that match, you beat the crap out of me. Physical bruises, those healed, but emotionally, I will never heal. Almost 17 years later, we have somebody that is more than in their prime. You have a former peer champion, television champion, tag team champion, world champion. We're talking about the franchise, Jay Lethal. You know, it was hard not to uh, pay attention to what he was doing. You know, solidifying himself as one of the greatest ROH champions of all time. I had to shed all of his teachings. I had to shed his, his stench. I had to shed his fingerprints that were deep on my very soul. I had to shed it so that I could look myself in the mirror and be proud of what I saw. Jay Lethal has rightfully earned the nickname The Franchise as a man who holds almost every club and franchise record for Ring of Honor and a man who really epitomized Ring of Honor for the greater part of the last decade. And I had both the Ring of Honor World Championship and the Ring of Honor Television Championship. That's like being the president and the vice president. And I was the man. I was the face of the company, and I way overshadowed anything that Samoa Joe has ever done in Ring of Honor. As most champions are defined, they're defined by their one great run. And mine still has yet to be eclipsed. You know, he came close, very close. I think that's always been the issue with Jay. Close. I think now it's just him desperate to get over that finish line. Wait a second! And Sanjay Dunn has betrayed the trust of Dunn and the Gresham as well! And it's Lee Moriarty! It's Moriarty lethal, but Sanjay Dunn! And now they too can double team Moriarty. Lethal injection caught on Moriarty. Come on, man, that's not how this goes. Business just picked up. Samoa Joe back home in Ring of Honor. This was Jay Lethal's mentor. Talk about men that know each other. Talk about men with history. That's not what I taught him. I taught him be vicious. But we don't share the carcass. We don't gather a pack of hyenas. We hunt solo. And we take everything. And I just went out there to remind Jay about how to do things the proper way. And I showed him how to. Kaninkle Mount Buster! Joe covers two, three! Finally, Joe's journey to win this elusive title is over. We have got a special present that we know you're going to appreciate. Drum roll, please! Oh, please. Oh, what is this? What? Oh, good God. And it's Satnam Singh! One of 
the biggest son of a bitches I've ever seen. The, the first ever native of India drafted into the NBA. He's been working out under the guidance of Sanjay Dutt. Now Sanjay Satnam and I, we think we want a shot at this Ring of Honor Television Championship, but Samoa Joe is a gutless coward and he would never accept our challenge. So we figured, why don't we just keep attacking him and provoking him till finally, like a man, he stands up and defends himself. July 23rd, ROH returns to pay-per-view, decked before dishonor. And what we need from you, won't cut it with this pencil. We need you to take this pen, black ink, sign your name on the dotted line, let's make it official. Are you gonna actually be committed to doing what you need to do to make sure that I don't come around anymore? The answer is simple. You're not willing to do what I'm willing to do to you. I'm worried that Jay Lethal will use the fear and the jealousy as motivators in this bout. And if he does, he's gonna be fighting for the wrong reasons and it's Samoa Joe's match to win. Jay Lethal is inside of Samoa Joe's head. And now the champion is going in with an injury caused by his opponent. A master of the craft, a franchise, will do nothing more than to capitalize on what he's already started. I want those memories to replay in your mind. I want every word that came out of your mouth to be ringing in your ears as I slam my fist into your skull. I'm going to give you the greatest gift that any teacher could ever ask for. I'm taking every ounce of disrespect that you've thrown my way. I'm taking every ounce of pain that you have thrown my way. I'm taking every ounce of hatred that I have developed for you, and you are getting all of it, every last drop. You are not a chosen one. You are not the one for the job. You are not the successor. You are not the next in line. The only thing you're gonna be is another victim with a number that is written down in what I have done on this earth. When I take your Ring of Honor Television Championship, I will make sure you never forget. You will never forget. The Ring of Honor Pure Championship started in 2004 when AJ Styles defeated CM Punk to become the inaugural champion. When you think about guys like AJ Styles, Brian Danielson, Nigel McGuinness, <laughs> Jay Lethal, these guys represent the Pure title, Samoa Joe to the fullest. These are guys that have mastered their craft and showed that inside of that ring, you can have pure wrestling. It's not about finishers, it's not about signature moves, it's about wrestling. It's about the sport of professional wrestling. You get three rope breaks. After that, you can be pinned or submitted in honor under the ropes. You get one closed fist. A second results in a disqualification. You can lose the championship on a count out or disqualification. And if anybody interferes, they are fired. They are gone from Ring of Honor Wrestling. They separate the rules and make it about two people inside of the ring showing that they are the best at professional wrestling. On July 23rd at Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor, I think Daniel Garcia is in the driver's seat. Wheeler Yuta has prepared for men like Josh Woods and Jonathan Gresham, submission-based wrestlers that will try to force you to use your rope breaks or go for the quick pins. I know Chris Jericho has been in Daniel Garcia's ear. I know that Garcia is prepared to use the rules against Wheeler Yuta. In the past, the strategy has worked great for wrestlers like Doug Williams and John Walters. I don't think that'll be any different at Death Before Dishonor. I feel Willa Yuta will retain the championship simply because he wants to hold on to what the Ring of Honor Pure Championship represents. If you look at Daniel Garcia, I believe he's a phenomenal athlete, but he's also an entertainer. He wants to entertain the crowd. He wants the people to get behind him, the showmanship. That doesn't apply for the Pure title. Hey, I'm Caprice Coleman, and I'm here today with the Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Willa Yuta. And I'm also here with his challenger, Daniel Garcia, representing the Jericho Appreciation Society. I want to ask the champion a question first. Willa, what is it like being the Ring of Honor Pure Champion, a championship that holds so much history and prestige? Caprice, holding this championship, it's both an honor and a responsibility. Uh, it's an honor in that it shows that I am truly the purest encapsulation of what it means to be a professional wrestler, but it's also a responsibility to guys like Brian Danielson, like Nigel McGuinness, uh, guys who brought this championship forward and to defend it against sports entertainers like my opponent here. Daniel, let me ask you a question. Why have you had your eye on the championship, the pure championship at that? What would make you a great champion 
How would you represent that title? I've just heard him name these names like Brian Danielson, Nigel McGuinness. I just think the name Wheeler Yuta, it doesn't fit in all those great names. I think Daniel Garcia would fit much better. You know, those people have held this title, this great prestigious title to such a high standard and I just don't think you fit. I don't think you fit at all. Oh, wow. Yuta, do you see any holes in Garcia's games? I mean, we got his Kangol hat, we got whatever this tank top thing is that he's doing now. No, I mean, we got a few holes. I think the biggest one that I see, though, Be careful, is, be careful. Hey, hey, it's all right, man. It's just a lack of mental toughness. See, I was in, I was in that cage with him in Blood and Guts. You learn a lot about a man when he starts bleeding, and I looked in his eyes. I saw a coward. We were exchanging slaps between the two rings. I looked in his eyes, I saw fear. I saw pain. You didn't see that in my eyes, Garcia. So what are you gonna do it's just me and you? The only thing I saw is when I whipped you with a belt and threw you off the cage into a pile of thumbtacks, 2,000 thumbtacks, that's what I saw. Yeah. I didn't see you for the rest of the match after that. Where were you at? Yeah, you're gonna be whipping me with a belt? I um, might be, I might be. Okay. Okay. thumbtacks out there for this belt? No, no, man. Daniel, let me ask you a question. What do you feel about your game right now? How will your prowess represent the pure title? You wanna know what I think the hole in your game is? Yeah, what's up? You're too nice. Oh, that's you're it. too compassionate, I'm not. It, Caprice, you pay attention to the internet, right? Of course, yeah. When Brian came to AEW, what was he saying in every interview? Who did he want by his side? Well, yeah. It wasn't Wheeler Yuta, it was Daniel Garcia. Every single interview he said, oh, I want Daniel Garcia to be by my side. I want him in my stable. I want to help level him up. He didn't say he wanted to level you up. And Regal can teach you all, all he wants to teach you, but he's trying to teach you the traits that I was blessed with, that I was born with. I am nasty. I am grimy, I am violent. Willard, the Blackpool Combat Club has the potential to hold a lot of titles. They have the Interim World Championship, Claudio could possibly be the Ring of Honor World Champion, and you are holding the Pure Champion. Is, has this been the plan the whole time for the Blackpool Combat Club? The plan hasn't been just to collect, collect championships for the sake of having hardware. No, the plan has always been to push forward our vision of professional wrestling, push forward what we see. You know, you talk about Brian Danielson saying a lot about you before he got here. And then he stepped in the ring with you, and he stepped in the ring with me. And then he knew what was up. Look, Garcia, you don't worry about it, man. Look, there's a reason that I have this championship already. It's because I embody what Blackpool Combat Club, what professional wrestling represents. And you know, that's, what, that's what's reigning supreme. That's why we have the interim championship. That's why Claudio is gonna go win the Ring of Honor World Championship. And that's why I have this pure championship right now, bud. Speaking of the Blackpool Combat Club and their championships and the factions, they feel they are the dominant faction in AEW. How do you feel about that? Oh, no, nah, definitely not, definitely not. They couldn't even beat us on their own. They had to get Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz. If it was a one-on-one -on -one matchup, Jericho Appreciation Society, Blackpool Combat Club, you guys don't stand a chance, man. Guys, I have one more question, and I'm gonna let the champion answer first, okay, Garcia? Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, Saturday, July 23rd. Who walks away the Ring of Honor pure champion? Caprice, it's gotta be me. Why is that? See, this match, this is a professional wrestler versus a sports entertainer. See, I've known this guy for a long time. Danny, I've known you for a long time, and I always thought we were cut from the same cloth. I thought you were a pro wrestler like me. I thought you loved this. Where's that guy that I had an hour-long draw with in a 100-degree warehouse, huh? Yeah, where's that guy? Where's the guy who loved this so much? Do you remember the first day we met? It's after you fought for a year. You fought for a year to come back from that car accident. Hey, shut up, shut up. Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, do not talk about the car accident. We oh, are not, yeah, yeah, we are not caught from yet. the same club. We are yeah. not caught from the same club. Oh, no, you don't not. have that dog in you. Look, I got that dog oh, in yeah, I'm too nice. I'm too nice. I got no love for you. I got no love for you. Did you ever talk about the car accident? Oh, no. Did you ever talk about the car accident? Versus them boys. The moment we've all been waiting for is here. I was there. Wheeler's down on the apron. Harwood out of the way. The Briscoe brothers, who I feel are the best tag team on this planet. Big rig! Watch by a step! Two! That's it! Three. Oh my god! FTR won my heart, and I believe they won the respect of the Briscoes. Unbelievable. A match that lived up to every expectation. Outstretch hand. There you go. Yeah, that's respect right there. And this is what Ring of Honor was built on. Both teams 
showed they were the genuine article. These two teams, are, I think, are, are way more alike than they even realize. I would love to see these guys fight again. That match with the Briscoes is probably the most grueling match I've ever had, one of the most mentally draining matches, but it's something where no, it's never taken that much out of me. Like, we walked out of there changed. When the night was over, I could have retired, and I could have been good, because that was our defining moment in tag team wrestling. They have harnessed the craft of tag team wrestling. Tag team wrestling is at, at perfection, is the greatest entertainment ever. Main event in many of the Ring of Honor pay-per-views because we believe in tag team wrestling that much. You know, I think a lot of FTR success can boil down to the word legacy. It's been important to them to prove to themselves and to prove to others that said they could not do it, that they are one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Everywhere they go, they become champions. So I believe when you look at tag team wrestling, you can't mention tag team wrestling without mentioning FTR. I don't know if you can find any more decorated tag team wrestlers in the world than what we're seeing right now. I made my living in this sport because I was one half of the greatest tag team of all time. And if the Briscoe brothers want to step in and they want to challenge me and challenge my best friend to be the greatest tag team, that's where I got a problem because you make it personal now. And when it becomes personal, business goes out the window. Oh, oh no! Big rig! Forget about it! This is ugly. Ugly the greatest tag team next cowboy you're gonna find. And all those titles prove it. Briscoe's. If you want to be a king, you got to kill a king. And we ain't dead yet. Top guys, out. If y'all gonna mention our names on national television at 10 o'clock at night, can somebody please at least let me know? Man, come on, guy, I'm gonna get phone calls. Don't give us a warning. The Briscoe Brothers, 12 times over the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, champions for well over a thousand days in total, are easily the number one tag team in Ring of Honor history. There might be people watching this that don't know who the Briscoe Brothers are. Man, break it down, boy. All right, Ring of Honor shut down, okay? So we just want to let everybody know that Briscoes ain't shutting down. So we was doing all the shows, you know, we was wrestling two, three times a week. Guns blazing, baby. You know, Guns four blazing. times in one weekend. We're fighters, we're fighters, y'all are fighters. I ain't gonna take that away from you. But in a fight, it takes one one punch, one good shot. Your boys caught me. Y'all caught me with that one good shot. The Briscoes have had nothing but time to sit and wait and train and seethe and froth at the mouth to get this type of opportunity to face FTR again. If I had my vote, I would have this match every day of the week and twice on Sunday. You're fresh now, right? So oh, we're we're fresh fresh days. How about we beat you out? Two out of three falls. If we beat your asses twice in one night, is that a fluke? Twice in one night, is that a fluke? Don't get sweat. Don't get sweat. The Briscoes have lost before, and when the Briscoes lose, they go back home and they look at things, they look at the match, they redirect themselves, and they come back and they win. That's what the Briscoes do. And if you ever see the Briscoes in a rematch, it's a totally different team. The Briscoes are gritty. I mean, they're like us. They they don't care to, to have a five-star match. They want to fight. They enjoy fighting. When you talk about Ring of Honor tag team, there's no way to talk about Ring of Honor tag team without mentioning the Briscoe brothers. If no other team could bring that to us, if only the Briscoes can bring that to us, if they're the only ones that have that physicality, that have that mentality, if they can step up and they can hit us as hard as we hit them, that's what it's gonna take. The first match was about who was more authentic, who was more real, and which team was the best wrestling tag team. This rematch is a rematch I wanna see, people across the world are gonna see. FTO, this one that y'all's on is getting ready to hit a brick wall. Woo, we kick-started y'all boys, Y'all ran a whole circle, and now y'all about to hit a damn brick wall. The first fight was for the belts, okay? This fight is for the legacy. And the legacy is something I'm taking home to my wife and my daughter, and I'm going to teach them, and I'm going to teach my daughter she can be whatever she wants. And if I got to beat your ass on death before dishonor, that's what I'll do. Two out of three falls, death before dishonor. Two out of three falls. Yeah, FTR's going to beat your ass. Shit, we're going to sweep y'all boys. Woo. Sweep y'all's asses, getting the brooms out, mother... When you are motivated by something that is bigger than you, whether it's your family, whether it's your career, 
or that next level, when it is talking about legacy, when you do get into that pantheon of greats, that gives you that extra kick of motivation. I think what's at stake for both teams is legacy. Everything's at stake for us. This is best run of our careers. This is the run of a lifetime. This is the kind of stuff that tag teams dream about, anybody dreams about. To have the fans react to you the way they are right now, to have people invested in us the way they're invested in us right now. There may be no one in professional wrestling that are on a hotter streak. This is everything we could have ever hoped for and then some. I want to see the rematch of the Briscoes and FTR simply because now the Briscoes know what they're going up against. For FTR, this will put an exclamation point on the victory that they had at Super Card of Honor and show that at any point, they could have gone to Ring of Honor and defeated the Briscoes for the tag team titles. Okay, you know, you might be calling us Buster Douglas. We ain't Buster Douglas, okay? Mm. We're Muhammad Ali. I choose death, and if I die at death before dishonor, as long as I win, and as long as my family gets the paycheck, I'll be okay. So July 23rd, Ring of Honor pay-per-view, death before dishonor. FTR and the Briscoes have agreed to a best two out of three falls for the Ring of Honor tag team titles. And we make it official, guys. Cheers, my bit.